Last week in my private Facebook group, I had the chance to interview a million dollar earner. So please welcome Mel Levitz to the show, guys. Cue up the intro. The fact of the matter is, whether you've been in network marketing for years or just a few days, your family and friends have seen your opportunity and your phone is, as we call it, burnt. If you're anything like me, that's a scary thought. So the big question is, how do entrepreneurs like us, who love the network marketing profession, who no longer want to be that guy, and are tired of convincing people during uncomfortable let's get coffee meetings where they say, what's this all about? How do we market in a way that aligns us with our dream clients and expands our network of upfront and transparent professionals, allowing us to get our time back, our families back, and gain a real passive asset? People like us who value impact over income, we deserve to see our visions once and for all. Join me in this podcast where we'll uncover just how to do that. My name is Eric Sablon. Welcome to Burnt Phone Marketing. She's computer. Pause. Uh, in the world, she's brought me to some to amazing places. We've been on some amazing, amazing journeys. But today, I want to talk to her and get everybody, kind of give a live Q&A on what it feels like to cross that elusive seven figure mark. Guys, she has built this business um, ups and downs. We're gonna go over ups and downs. We have some live Q and A that we're gonna be able to get into. But first off, what I want you to do is I want to, you to hashtag live if you're catching this live, hashtag replay if you're catching the replay. And you know what? We wanna know where everybody's coming in from. So if you drop what state you're coming in from, that would be awesome. We will respond to as many as we can and we will get your question, some of your questions answered. So guys, just so you know, if you ever wanted to have an intimate conversation with a seven figure earner in network marketing, guess what you got? You have that right now. So this is into the group, into the small group. And guys, I'm, I'm all about repurposing content. So guess what's gonna happen? This is gonna go into a podcast that I run. So you guys are getting it first. So just so you guys know, you guys are getting it first. Please welcome seven figure earner, the single millionaire, Melanie Levitz to the show. Please, Mel, Mel, welcome to the show. I'm super excited to have you here. I'm super excited to be here, Eric. I was just mentioning, you know, our, our first interview last year, and wow, we're here together again, and now I'm being interviewed for a million dollars. Wow, our journey is just getting impeccable, right? It is so fun. It is, this, <laughs> it is definitely something that I'm super excited to be on. I'm, you know, jumping on your coattails with you, so just know that I'm excited. So, Mel, a lot of the people, in this group they don't know a little bit they don't know who you are and what you what you've done but what i'd like to do is like at the beginning just kind of id your story where you came from and your seven figure earner so i know you can do it in 20 seconds 20 to 40 seconds go ahead and give the audience your quick id of i love it the story that you knew what not to do or you were taught what not to do um <laughs> go back and then tell yes. where you came from so Tell them yes. about where, they, where, they, where you came from. Well, thank you so much again, Eric, for having me here. I'm super excited to share my journey with you guys and just helping you believe that this too is possible. I am originally from Miami, Florida. My mom is uh, from Israel, so I'm first generation in the U.S. and my dad comes from New York. So uh, I'm, a, I'm a tough cookie, right? Uh, but I learned quickly what not to do. Both my parents were the troublemakers of their family, so I decided quickly that I wanted to start my life off in the military, traveling the world, and of course getting an education through the government, right? And uh, I'm so grateful that I did because 10 years ago, I was introduced to network marketing where my life has just been heaven on earth, you know, uh, achieving things that I never even dreamt possible. When I said yes to network marketing, it was yes to the opportunity to travel and save a ton on my vacations. And little did I know by sharing this platform with others, uh, it would produce an income that re helped me retire in three years from the military at the age of 31 and I just continue to build this where our team now today has grown to 11,000 people in over 15 countries 
and now, you know, creating a, a six figure income within my first three years, doubling it at four years, becoming an international speaker, an author now, and uh, just continuing to pay it forward. And, and of course, you know, giving back to communities in need. That is so awesome. I've actually seen you in, in one of the uh, uh, bottle schools that, that, that your company builds and, and you actually went to Guatemala and did some bottle schools. So actually, you know, let's just start there. When, when you first get into network marketing, your goal is like, I want to make a bunch of money. But what was the, when was like that big transition from impact, from income to impact? Because we always say that, you know, on a lot of my podcasts, I talk about impact over income. When was that, when was that turning point? What was the, and I don't want to, I don't want, I don't want to give, give the, the audience like a number, but what was the number when you were making residually? What was the number when it was like, all of a sudden it shifted from impact, from income to impact? What was that number? Because we got to take care of ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I remember, you know, uh, realizing that my income started to increase to the point where it, 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 it surpassed my 12 year Air Force income. And at that point, I'm talking to my mentors, I'm calling my, my leaders and asking them, like, I really want to get out of the military. I want to, you know, have my, my freedom. I'm making more money from home. I'm traveling the world, having a blast and helping a lot of people do the same. So I, now that I look back, I think it was probably about $3,000 that was my freedom number. And when I got out of the military, you know, I only replaced what I was making. So I actually was taking a huge risk of losing an entire paycheck just to fulfill my dreams and, and uh, live my passion. That's awesome. So, so look, I, 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 was at, I was at an event one time and he said, if you make a dollar over your residual uh, income, residual bills, you're free. So yes. like $3,000, that's cool. That's, and, that, and that's a great start for, for everybody. Um, I dropped a link in, on my personal Facebook page this morning and I said, hey, I'm doing a live interview with a million dollar earner looking for a few questions to ask on the interview. What would you ask basically? What would be your number one question? And um, my buddy Jeff, he owns a marketing agency. I kind of know who he is. He owns a marketing agency up here. He's super successful in marketing. But um, he asked, what did you have to adjust in your approach to business when you were at 10,000, 100,000, and then let's just say 500,000? What, would, what was the adjustments you had to make? Well, let's just start off because it's a three-part question. What was the adjustments you had to make at 10,000, from 3,000 to 10,000, and then from 10,000 to 100,000? What was that adjustment? Yeah, that's a really good question. I'm going to ask those questions to my mentors. Um, what I made for the first 10,000, the adjustment that I had to make was two things. One, I had to, to take this and decide that I wanted to treat it like a business versus a hobby. Two, I made sure that I was attending all, all our company and team events, that I would not miss any corporate event. And, and I took it as if, you know, this was my education to financial freedom. You know, we go to school, we, we pay tuition, we, we sit in classes, we do exams, we have lab work, we have study hall, and we go through all of that to create a, a certificate that now today is unlikely that you can probably get that career in your profession. So I really quickly understood that 90% of success was just showing up. So when they said, all you have to do is show up to the events, I was like, I got that. That's simple, right? So that's what I did for the 10,000. And then, so, so I've, been, I've been with you at a couple of events and you always told me that, you know, events is where, where things change and things happen. But also as a leader, what you told me was, the more people you get to the events, the more people that you get to the trainings, the events and trainings, there's a culture behind there. And you want to create that in your team. Uh, if you're starting a, a network marketing company or you're, are you starting a network marketing business or you're, you're a network marketer already, like your goal is to build a culture around you and what you do. So I, actually, I'm just going to kind of go a little off script right now. What is your team's title of liberty or what's your call sign like like russell brunson has funnel hackers and we have like lead smiths and we you know what is like the title of liberty that you actually call out to um all of your team what is it well uh for our team we're in dream worldwide but in in as a whole our company is making dreams a reality 
There you go. There you go. Yeah. Making dreams real. Guys, see how you can you can align yourself with the title that title of liberty. And as long as you drive people to it, you know, you're you're definitely, definitely, definitely getting the getting the buy-in from the rest of the uh from the team, from all the teams that you that you bring in. So I'm actually gonna go Hobie Johnson, one of my favorite guys. He owns he does his own podcast. He's out of uh, Oregon. Um he said, if everything went away and you had to start from scratch, what would be your first three steps? Guys, Whoa. grab your <laughs> paper and pen because this is like million to zero first three steps. Like if you wanted a launch pr platform, here's what, here's, here it is right here. So Mel, what would be your first three steps? Wake up tomorrow morning, your downline is zero, zero, zero. What are oh. the first three steps? <laughs> first, I would definitely um, say that your first step is to decide, is to make a decision, to have faith, and to choose whether you're going to continue to win at the highest level or you're just going to fall back into mediocre. Mm -hmm. And for me, when you asked that question, the first, the second step was to move to Bali. <laughs> Because I definitely could afford, if everything was gone, to live in another third, to live in a third world country. So I would definitely move to Bali, live on the beach, and just start again. You know, build a new team, meet some new people, get their phone numbers, you know, build relationships, make the, make the connections, see what's in alignment that I could make their dreams a reality, and see if the vehicles that I'm a part of can help them and, and enhance them. If not, nothing nothing ever just disappears. What I would still have is the connections of the people that I already know. You know, God forbid, I'm sure that I would have hundreds of people that would open their, their couches for me if I needed to start over, right? And that's what's really valuable. I, I, I remember, you know, a life key uh, lesson, it's, uh, you know, a phrase. It's, it's not about what you know in the world. It's about who you know. And going back to the question you had asked before, you said, what would I do? Uh, what, what changes, what adjustments were made at the 10,000, the 100,000, and the 5,000? For the 100,000, uh, you said it, actually. You just get better at promoting events. You know, mm. your t first 10,000 is you. You considered yourself to, to plug in, to commit, to be consistent, to be here for a year. And then the, the next 100,000 is now you got to – help a lot of other people do the same thing. And if you're winning by attending the events, guess what's going to happen for them? They're going to win by attending the events. And what I quickly realized was not everybody that I met in the beginning or my friends from the beginning, or even let alone family from the beginning when I started would meet me here today where I'm at today. I did have to change my friends. I did have to change the people I was surrounding myself with. They say you make the average of the five people's income you hang out with. So I, I quickly started realizing like, well, this person doesn't make any income. And guess what? They're not developing themselves, reading books, attending, you know, personal development growth seminars, or even let alone coming on vacation with me and enjoying the membership that we have. So I changed my friends. And at 5,000, I invested a lot of money within myself. I remember uh, in 2017, I invested over $10,000 alone in personal development and growth seminars. And I remember one of my mentors in our company, he says, you know, that he invested $100,000 in one year on personal growth in himself. And people are like, what? That's crazy. I never even made 100,000 in a year, let alone, you know, uh, spending it on personal growth. And he's like, you know what's crazy though? I may have spent 100,000 that year, but I also made a million that year. So that 10,000 I spent that year, I made over 150,000 that year. So is it worth it? You got to invest. You want to make 500, you got to put in $5. You want to make a thousand, you got to put in a hundred dollars. Whatever your cap is, is what your investment should be. Wow. That's a huge nugget. So I'm just going to kind of recap what she said, guys. Literally your network is your net worth. So just think about it. You're the average of the five people that you surround yourself with also like investing in your so so going back to her story at one to ten thousand zero to ten thousand it was about her 
basically, I will survive. Then the next step was about her helping her team. And then her next step was taking the mirror and showing it back at her and literally saying, if I want to take it to, if I want to go from 500,000 to a million and beyond, then I'm going to have to become the person that a million dollar people will follow. So guys, just remember that, like look in the mirror today and just be like, am I a million dollar earner? Because if you're not, then that's probably where your stopping point is right now. That's probably where your glass ceiling is right now. And what I tell you is Roger, Roger Bannister ran the four minute mile. Mm. Nobody ran it. The four minute, they, the scientists said that it was literally impossible. And then what happened? He did it. And then right afterwards, hundreds of people do it, did it. And now high school athletes do it. So just remember, take the lid or the glass ceiling off the top of what you're thinking and you can expand your mind so much. So we're going to go back to some more questions. I, I, I see. And I just want to add in there really quickly. This is not part of the script, but <laughs> even today, my brother's like, why are you dressed all fancy to go grocery shopping? And I was like, well, I want to meet fancy people. Right. So attract the people that you want to be that, that you want to recruit by even let alone the, your dress appearance that alone is going to speak volumes yes that is like yeah if you if you want to feel like a million bucks wear a suit if you want to feel like you know if you if you can afford it and you're not you're not putting yourself in a situation where you're not okay you should have the nice purse you should have the nice car you should have you're attracting the people that you want to surround yourself with so i mean don't go into debt but definitely um live the lifestyle of what you you're projecting because we talk about this all the time in our trainings um lifestyle posts and it's not always about flashy cars or check flashing or all that stuff it's literally just the things that you're doing that people get attracted to so i'm going back to oh this is a good one so molly blakely she's uh i interviewed her along a while back on my podcast she owns a cookie company and she's done tons of things she's been on tv shows she's been on all sorts of stuff she's an alaska girl so she asks, how many times have you heard the, no, the word no when it comes to business? <laughs> <laughs> I know Just that's the training that we do. Yeah. <laughs> Just yesterday. I honestly uh, have stopped counting. Um, more for sure, for sure. Way more no's than yeses. Absolutely. And that's what's crazy about this is you just have to get used to the no's. And it's not no to you, it's no to the idea. And it's mostly because they're just have a lack of education, a lack of passion, or they just have not been revealed to what's available for them. Because they say that, uh, don't get me mixed up on the exact numbers, but they say that anywhere between 75 to 85% have to see it again between seven to 12 times before saying yes. Yes. That's huge. Yeah. That is huge. So remove your emotions from the no. Wow. That, that's a good one. Yeah. So follow up, guys. What is that? Follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up. And don't be, I mean, be unique with your follow up. Don't be like, did you check out my link? Did you do this? Did you do that? Guys, be, you're looking for friends. You're looking for business partners. You're looking for people that, you know, are coming aboard to do what you do, to grab your title of liberty. So don't be annoying because that's what they're going to be to their people. So I'm going to go back. Um, I like this one. Jamie Walsh asks, um, how did you, how did you balance family life? Now you're the single millionaire. So, um, yes. <laughs> and I know you have, you have a, her dog's name is DOG, like literally yes. DOG. the dog's name is DOG. So how did you like balance family life? Um, with maybe like, like immediate family. Yeah, for sure. So when I got started with this, um, I'm, I'm not, um, you know, a big dog lover. I actually took a few years for my dog to, to really gain the unconditional love from its owner. But today I love him very much. And DOG, if you haven't noticed, it stands for dog. You spelled D-O-G dog, right? Just so for those late uh, bloomers. Uh, we've been together for 11 years. So actually one year before I joined my network marketing company, I got my dog. 
And I literally, even though I'm the single millionaire today, believe it or not, people came to me and said that I was a horrible dog mom because I would leave my dog at home for 12 plus hours while I would go out and do meetings and work in the military. And I was like, wow, this is, this is really happening right now. <laughs> but now today my dog literally has been with his owner, me, for the last seven years, not having to worry about me, you know, leaving for work. He actually probably has traveled than most of you guys, uh, you know, flying on planes, going to Hawaii and or Las Vegas and Puerto Rico and, and Canada. So he's, he travels and now today he, he doesn't look 11 at all. He actually looks like a puppy. But what I would say is if you do have children and you do have family, it's very important to keep them involved. And I remember, you know, there was times where my family was not supportive. You know, uh, they, even to this day, I have family members that don't even talk to me. And what's crazy is they travel and I like their pictures and I, you know, ask them, you know, where they got their deals and then nothing, silence. Ever since I, you know, started becoming successful in business, isn't that crazy? But I had to lay, you know, the things down where I would tell my mom, you know, I, I, I wouldn't be coming home for the holidays or for any birthdays because in the following year, when she would call me to come home, I would be on the next flight. So you have to have these important conversations. And if you do have close family members that live in your home, include them in your business. You know, I work with 11,000 people, so we know how to deal with children and husbands and spouses. So we have that expertise, even though I am the single millionaire. And the best advice that I could give is, especially for children, you know, let's say they want a gift and mommy or daddy has to go do a meeting and, you know, they want mommy or daddy to be home and, and play with them, whatever the case. What's really cool is you can help them be involved by getting the picture of the gift that they want, cutting it into small puzzle pieces. And every time you go to a meeting or you go to an event or even you take a call, they get a puzzle piece that they could put together for that gift that they want because your time is not with them. So now they're on their way to getting that gift and literally kicking you out of the door so they can get more puzzle pieces. That's awesome. I actually, um, one of one of my mentors said that it's a similar story, but that's exactly what they do with their kids. And, and, and it is a grind. It is a grind. So now that we're talking about the grind, like, I mean, we wake up and we're entrepreneurs and we're on the grind all the time. And they talk about, you know, always going like me, I'm always thinking about work or I'm always thinking about something that has to do with work or you know, I mean, you don't, like Russell Brunson said, that you don't go on vacation when you're an entrepreneur. You like go to a different location where you can work, but you're just not really working. You're not like in it, but you're in it. You're, you're mentally, you're still there. So yeah. what, when was the, when, so like for 10 years, for a decade, you've been doing it. So you've got your stripes, you've got your, um, John Melton was on my, um, was on my podcast not too long ago. And he said, I paid the stupid tax. So what would be like one in business, what would be like one thing that you'd share with the audience to avoid paying the stupid tax? Because you did it once and just share it with the, the audience that says, yeah, this like, don't fall in love with, uh, with a recruit, don't do this. What, what, what would be like the one stupid tax that you paid that you know that you'd never do and you'd wanna share with the world right now that say, don't do that. What's one thing that I would would change in what I've done before? Yes. Okay. Not necessarily pertaining to taxes. No, no, not, no, no, not, <laughs> okay. no, not, not, just not, not clear that up. Taxes. <laughs> well, um, I would say in our company, I don't know how it is for yours, but don't ever give your personals away. I wanted my mom to join so bad. She's, she's won so many TVs and cash prizes and awards in her business and multiple businesses that she's been a part of. And I thought that she would crush this with me, right? So I was like, let me help you, mom. I'm going to pay for your membership, which I don't suggest doing. Then I'm going to, instead of, you know, of course, allowing you to pay for the monthly fees because you can get four and pay no more with our concept. Right. I'm going to give you my personals so I don't pay the monthly fee, right? Mm -hmm. So long story short, she got 10 personals. And out of those 10 people, three remained and two of them hit really significant ranks in our company, which uh, cost me six years actually counting because I still have yet to achieve it. 
the highest rank in the company that I would have achieved in my first four years, which is an average income of over half a million dollars a year. So that cost me big, <laughs> for sure. So guys, you want to help your family, you want to help your friends, you want to help everybody else, let them do the work. Because I learned something a while back, if you pay, you pay attention. So just remember, like giving yeah. away, giving away personals or giving away people is, is, is basically like giving away uh, volume, giving away money. And, and th what did she just say? She would have condensed her time frames to hit the top rank in mm -hmm. by four years or six years. Still and counting still. <laughs> yeah. Six years and counting. So guys, just remember that. That's that's a nugget. That's a nugget that you want to like. Think about when you're getting ready to like enroll somebody and then you're like, oh, I'll just give it to you and I'll just give it to you. It's your business. It's your business. Those people will help those people. You help you, help you and then you help them. So here's another question right on that question. Eric Welch. Eric Welch has been in the industry for a long time. He's part of the group. He's part of our master class. He's He's actually one of the guys that I really look up to as well. He's, he's, got, he's got OG stripes. So, yes, I love it. So he said, <laughs> um, if you had to start all over, would you sponsor more or less people? And basically, would you, would you change, what would you change about who you invited into the business with you? That is an OG question because he's looking for the right people if he had to start all over. So yes. now, what, 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 would it, what would it be? What would be like your nugget for that? Yeah, if I had to start all over, you are absolutely right. I definitely recruit up. <laughs> I go to events uh, and I meet professional business people that already understand the industry. And uh, I wouldn't, you know, like in the beginning when I was super excited with be out in a nightclub and, and talking to the bathroom attendee, you know, or, or talking to the janitor. And, you know, of course, everybody has the potential to achieving financial freedom. It doesn't matter what background you have, but I rather do, I rather work with the people that already have the mindset, that already have the, the, the structure and the stability, that already have the credibility and just help them run their race to achieving their goals and their financial freedom. Yes. That, that honestly, like I take that, I take that to heart. Um, yeah. you mind if I tell the, 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 the restaurant story? That was, I don't remember, but go ahead. I trust you. <laughs> okay. So I was actually, before this call, I was kind of doing an interview before the interview with, with Mel, because, you know, we kind of wanted to, to prep some stuff up and I asked her, you know, it's exactly what she's talking about. I asked her, you know, what was the last couple people that you enrolled personally? I mean, what, 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 what are they doing? And it's funny that she says what she just said, because I, t I, I actually said this. And if, if you like these restaurants, that's fine. If you don't like these restaurants, that's fine. I said, the problem is, is you're a phenomenal salesperson and a phenomenal closer. The biggest problem is, is you're presenting in McDonald's when you should be presenting in Ruth Chris. You know what she said? Dang. Like, <laughs> yeah. and all of a sudden it's like, boom. So just remember that surround yourself with the people that you in the networks in the places where you want to be with where you where they can excel you and i love what she said you have to recruit up if you recruit up you, you you're gonna you're you're building and building and building a lot more um you're digging into really really good networks so the better the network the better your network so um so uh, behind you is a poster she read it she she actually co co-authored a book called um push um so mel what you know you're an author now so what was the big what was the big shot that basically um how did that how did that opportunity open up to you like because yes. you got to be in the right place at the right time but then you also have to take action and guys fabian says it all the time all courses are good except there's three things, either you suck, we suck, or it sucked. Most <laughs> of the time, it's you didn't apply yourself. So when you got the opportunity to write in the book, and you weren't a writer, right? You're not a, you're not a writer? No, but you no. still- No, not only am I not a writer, I was raised by a, a family that spoke Hebrew. So I didn't, 
uh, they, their first language was not English. So not only am I not a writer, but my grammar mm -hmm. and punctuality is. <laughs> I was on a podcast the other day and he said, uh, one of the great sayings that he says is, B minuses change lives. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, and I always say, yeah, I was I'm a, sometimes I'm more day. like the. <laughs> exactly. I'm looking over to check out what he's saying. So um, I, there's some comments in here that I, I'm, I'm going to try to get to. Let's see here. All right. So we've got, what's up, Fabian? Looking in the mirror. We've got um, consistency is everything. Wow, that's amazing advice. Thanks, Marlo. Recruit up. Okay. Here we go. Chari, Chari, I, I, I probably butchered that, sorry, but um, I'm struggling to find clients. So recently I created a PowerPoint presentation, but not sure how to create a URL on social media. Um, the difference, oh, Shuri, I'll reach out to you. We'll talk, we'll talk about that. That's actually pretty easy to do. Um, so let's go back. I know there's one more spot where we had some questions. Barry shared it. Um, Hey guys, when you're doing a live interview, you have your phone, you have your monitor, you got your <laughs> iPad, you're, you're all over the place. So bear while with you're me. looking for that, I just want to add on that restaurant that you said, you know, he's like, Eric literally said to me, he's like, Melanie, you're presenting in a McDonald's. You should be presenting in a Ruth Chris. And I was like, dang, I haven't even eaten there. But yeah, you're so right. And I'll tell you what, Eric, that statement alone, I said it to my assistant to convince her to get started with our new program that we just launched. Thanks. Just so I can get, I'm like, you don't understand. I'm in a McDonald's. I need to be in the Ruth Chris. I love it. <laughs> so I absolutely love that. That was really, really good. And for any of those that want to get the book, you can also find it on Amazon. Um, push, we'll, we'll post happens. that. I'll post that in the comments. If you want the book, hashtag book, and we'll actually send you a link where you guys can download the book because it's 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 a phenomenal book. There's a ton of really really good network marketers in there, like Sasha and Governor, Matt Morris, Mel. There's a couple other yes. people in there. And you had asked me, you know, if I how did I get involved with this? Well, again, it's all about who you know. So there were some leaders that are pushing out co-authored books. And I thought to myself, this would be a great start for me to just get my feet wet, to see what it's like to, to write a chapter in a book. And I'll tell you, I was pretty scared. <laughs> but as we know, as we are network marketers, be going beyond your fear, stepping out of your comfort zone is when you see your growth. So I thought to myself, I really want to do this one day. I don't know if it's the right time now. So the first time, the first opportunity, I actually declined it. The second opportunity, I really liked the title. I really liked other people that were involved in it. And I said, you know what? I'm going to give this a shot. And I'm so grateful that I did because in four days of self-promoting this on my own social media pages, it sold international. And I would have never imagine that possible and it was just a few months of taking time in the morning an hour every day to just write down what i wanted and of course you know i had the expertise i thought it was going to be when they said you have a ghostwriter i thought okay i'm just going to tell them what i want to write and they write it and i thought that's what a ghostwriter does i'm like no they just go over all of your stuff to make sure it sounds good in proper uh, english <laughs> so it was very frightening but like i said it was definitely a, re a big reward and now i have that belief that i, I could write my own book and publish my own book so that's a great question Eric. so i'm going to go back into that what you just yes. said so how important because i do podcasts and i know a lot of a lot of people out there do facebook lives a lot of people uh do blogs a lot of people pick their publishing platform so when you decide when you said yes to the push book when you decided you know what this is exactly what i want to do did your mindset shift when you had one in your hand like what was the mindset shift that happened like when you were like i'm a published author what what was the like not an ebook not not this like i have a tangible book what what was the difference because you know there's a lot of people that have like youtube channels and and different things but what is it when you have that tangible thing that like yes exactly that <laughs> Honestly, I, I, it brought tears to my eyes. I just couldn't believe the words that came out of my mouth that were now on paper. 
And the first time I read my chapter, it's a quick, you know, ten, short 10 pages, but it's so powerful that it will lead you into the next, you know, Melanie's book, right? And I remember sitting there while I'm reading it, my eyes are flooding with tears and I'm actually reading it to my mom. So it was very rewarding, um, you know, something that I recommend for anybody that is interested in, you know, going above and beyond because this is history now. I have, I have, the books don't go away, right? This is history. I'm leaving a legacy behind. And, you know, I, I'm very uh, inspired by, you know, authors that have hundreds of books out there because now they, they're a legend. They're, they're iconic. Their name will always be remembered through these books. Right. Once it's scribed, once it's in writing, it's, it's, it's yours. It's, it's ready. Yeah. And it, 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 it produced, it probably produced some sort of intrinsic, like intrinsically you were like, you know what I'm like, I did this, I did this, now I'm legit. I did this, I, I, I did a book, like all of a sudden it kind of um, solidified the leadership that you have because you, you did something that you thought was hard, but you ended yeah. up doing it and you continue to persist. Like the book says, persist until success that happens. happens, guys. That's, so, yep. that's the one thing. So someone starting off, beginning, just totally starting off, um, Actually, you know what? Because we're, we're, there's some questions coming in. So I'm actually going to go okay. Barry Rome. This guy is super tech, super tech guy. He's got like all these automated tools that like, I'm like, uh, send me the link. Send me the link. I want that too. I want that too. So yeah. he asked, she obviously builds great teams to get to that level. I'd, I'd want to know how she kept her teams. Oh, this is, this is a bomb. Thank you, Barry how she keeps her teams motivate, motivated between when they join join her and when they have enough success to push their, push their pushing on their own. Wow. So what is the transition from, like how do you keep people in that infancy incubated section when they first join and they have all the excitement, how do you get them to where they're walking and even running on their own? What, what, what is like the process? Yeah. That is really good. So first of all, when I get someone started, I let them know right away, we have six months to run hand in hand because during these six months, I'm going to help you build your team and I'm going to work with your spot, your personals for six months each. So one, I'm getting them to understand that their time is limited and don't take my time for granted. Right. Two, I get them to create a launch event, especially now with Zoom platforms, online platforms, you know, we're in this pandemic. It's so much more convenient to get people on. So I have them create their launch event, their first event, inviting all their friends. We do it a few more times until they get comfortable knowing that how they can hold the clicker. Cause they say in our, in our industry, those with the clicker make the most money. So I, they say about a thousand dollars on your paycheck, on a monthly basis for those that are holding the clicker. Mm. So I get them comfortable, you know, step by step. And everyone's different, it, does, it just depends. Do you have the experience? Do you have the mindset? Do you have the drive, the ambition? Are you attending the events? So everyone will have their own race, but you really just start to see that they're showing up without you calling. They're making the calls without you calling. They start showing up, they start doing their own meetings without you even being there. They're enrolling people. They're starting to create their own leaders. And then all of a sudden they're like, you know what? We actually want our own name, our own brand. And we love you. We know you're there for us, but we got this. And right. those are the people that you're like, yes, we're doing it. And you, and you just are available. You let them know I'm proud of you. I'm here for you. And uh, of course, if you need anything, just call you have my number that's the whole like network marketing thing where you're at the front of the stage and then you get to the back of the stage you you, you go to the front of the room and then you're at the back of the room because you're building leaders up so like i i know you have i, I know a couple people that that i know that are on your team that how how long was the transition like when do you get to let them fly i mean how long was the transition from um, the, the couple that's in Florida? What was the transition from, you know, them like coming on board? Cause they had experience in other things. I mean, they had marketing experience. For someone that's in marketing, what was the transition from we're here to rank to, cause there's, there's rank and then there's leader. 
when yeah. was the when was the shift from rank to leader and when you could just let them fly and take off on their own team how, how long how long did that what was that incubation process like how long was it well again it's different for everybody and you just have to see what their skills are what they're doing what actions they're taking what they're saying and not only what they're saying but what they're saying and then doing what mm -hmm. they're saying and of course a lot of times i'm just so loving and giving i want to help people practically all the time. I think that's my flaw. I just don't know when to let go. So a lot of our leaders literally will just tell me, Mel, I got this. We'll call you if we need you. I can do this. So I usually get the conversation. And then again, I'm always just reaching out. How are you doing? How's life? How's everything going? Is there anything that I could do to serve you and your team? And a lot of times they're like, yeah, can you call this person and promote this event? Maybe we can have another meeting as a big shot with you. So <clears throat> I would say um, anywhere between you know, uh, six to nine months or even sometimes years where it's taken growth. And, and, and I think really what it boiled down to was they didn't have the proper mindset. They didn't have the decision that they know 100% that they can take action off of just making a decision. Mm -hmm. And once they gain that knowledge and realize like, wow, I know that I'm sitting on my butt and I'm not producing and the team's not producing versus, okay, I know now that I have to get up and make the calls and be the leader and set the appointments and promote the, the events. So once you start seeing all of that take place, then you can, you know, uh, let them, let them become that leader that they need to be, that their team will follow. Wow. Okay. Okay. So we got a few people on the line. Um, uh, Thomas, thanks for jumping on. Um, Marlo, thanks for jumping on. I'm gonna actually turn it over. I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let, um, basically I'm gonna let two people have questions for, um, for Mel. So if you have a question, drop it in the comments right now. I know, I know we're on Facebook, so we're talking right now, but literally they're waiting like 15 seconds before anything actually happens. So drop a question, if you have a question, Drop a question mark and then a question, and I will go through the questions to see um, which ones we can do. So we've got, we had a bunch of questions already. I kind of ran through those. Um, I actually want to ask one question while we're waiting for everybody else to come on board. When you first said five years ago, when you realized that this is literally what I want to do and how I want to do it, did you? Was there the investment in coaching? What kind of investment in coaching did you make? I know we talked about like 10% of what you're doing, but the investment in coaching, uh, what did that look like mentally before you were doing, before you were at Six Figure Earner? And what was it after you got to like, you know, that, that really cool number? So what was, what was literally the shift? I mean, when you said, because a lot of people are like, well, $300, that's expensive to invest in myself. And then some people are like, 7000 10000 20000 30000 I want to be in those rooms with those people. What was like mentally, what was the mindset shift between half a million and the million dollar mark that you're at? What is the, what was the mindset shift in personal development and coaching? Like, what do you want to get out of it? Yeah, for sure. Well, being in the same industry or same company for 10 years and becoming an international speaker and trainer, you, you tend to hear all of the same stories and a lot of the times the same training uh, aspects and tools that are being mentioned as we all, you know, keep everything pretty much similar. So I realized that, you know, I'm, I'm following the big leagues. I'm following the people that are making the seven figures a year, that are living the lifestyle, that have the dream house, that have the, the, the cars, you know, that I choose uh, one day to have. And I realized that they were taking more incentive, not just by attending their events in our company, but going outside and learning from, you know, people that have been around the industry for 40, 60 years that are still to this day investing themselves and learning every day to just be that teacher to be that instructor for us networkers to to continue learning alongside them so i realized that i had to again invest more in myself it wasn't just our four big national events we have every year it was more like i'm going to attend tony robbins i'm going to attend uh ty lopez i'm going to attend bob you know proctor and so many other great you know seminars that are available 
where it's not just my company or our industry, it's other business entrepreneurs where I can uh, expand my horizons and understand, you know, more uh, closing obstacles or more handling, you know, whatever uh, leadership skills that I need to do. And really what it was is for me is I just knew that there's another level. There's always going to be another level. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of you deciding if you want to get to that next level and what is it going to take for your investment in yourself to achieve that level that you so desire. That's, that's amazing. One of our coaches that uh, in, in, we have, we, you know, all of us in this group, we have coaches, but one of our coaches um, asked us on a coaching call not too long ago, well, why, what resources are you not using that are stopping you from getting to where you need to be? And literally like we, we all kind of looked at each other on the zoom and we're like, Holy cow, we have so many more resources that we can use. We have so many more things that we can use. So so it looks like we're coming on the top of the hour. We've been doing this for about 45 minutes. Um, there's a bunch of people on. And it, like I said, always, guys, if, if you catch this on the replay, hashtag replay. If you caught it live, most of you guys are already on here. And also, if you want her book, just hashtag um, book. And what we'll do is we'll actually send you out a link so you guys can pick up that book. So, Mel, I just want to say thank you so much. I appreciate you for the time that you had. Um, guys, this is going to be a podcast. And just so you guys know, this is a little, this is a little nugget for being in this group. Guess what you guys get? You guys get these events. You guys get these interviews with the people that I'm interviewing before it actually goes on to a podcast. This is the live recording of my podcast that you guys are going to be able to get. So just remember, we were going to try to get these, um, you know, either Wednesdays or Fridays, every single week, we'll try to get you guys some sort of new marketing or sales or um, uh, network marketing professional on here. So you guys can ask questions, do some Q&A. So guys, I thank you guys for being on here. You guys are an amazing audience. Mel, thank you so much. Is there any last words you got for the audience? What's the mic drop, Mel Levitz? the single millionaire what's the mic drop phrase i always say okay well we'll go back to podcast all right so here's it you're the biggest stage the largest stage biggest event that you've ever that you that in your industry you just got done keynoting and when i say keynoting i mean you're the sunday speaker you're the sunday speaker so you're closing out the event you're like the reason you're the the, the reason why people came was they told everybody that they're giving, like, she's coming, like, the last three weeks to sell all the tickets. Like, yes. they were holding out. What is the mic drop phrase that you want 150,000 people? They stand up, they turn around, they start walking to the door, they see your face on the, on the, on the banner that says, come see us. What is the mic drop phrase that you want everyone that, when they look up, to say, Mel Levitz does this making dreams a reality and Make you should be here guys she has her marketing down that's like her marketing <laughs> i do want to add one last thing can i add one last thing because you did ask me a question before we got started and i and i truly believe that it's the pinnacle of everything you asked me what belief systems do i have uh today or even when i started and it's still the same belief system it's god it's having the belief and the faith that even as small as a mustard seed, everything is possible. And when you truly believe that we are a direct image of God and God created us when he spoke, well, guess what? We have that same ability to speak. Our thoughts come first through our visions and through our actions and through our speaking, our results show up right in front of us. So have faith, you guys. Understand that your journey is the journey to create your story, to create your mess into a message. And when you have faith as small as a mustard seed, everything and anything is possible. God wants us all to live in abundance. So believe it and don't let anyone ever steal your dreams. You can make everything possible that you dream possible. So thank you so much, Eric, for having me as a guest. I love you, my brother, my business partner. I can't wait to see you again soon and grateful to have all of you guys here be a part of this journey with us. 
Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. Like I said, mic drop all the time. Follow her on social media. Um, when, the, when the podcast launches, I'll actually put a link to her book. I'll also put a link to her profile so you can reach out to her. But follow her. She's all over the – well, not right now, but she's usually all over the world. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it was a pleasure having you, and thank you for being such an, uh, an amazing, amazing guest for our group. So thank you guys. I'm going to turn off the live now. Stop stream. Stop recording. Are you tired of those lame Facebook groups that provide no value? Well, our Facebook group is awesome. Go to unlockthefbgroup.com and get access to our Facebook group where you will be able to find interviews of top network marketers and Q&As where you can jump in and talk to them live. We also have massive training. We provide a bunch of free tools. So jump into that group. Again, that's unlockthefbgroup.com. We'll ask you a few questions in mini chat because that's what we do. And make sure that you're not a spammer and get you into the group right away. So again, go to unlock the fbgroup.com and don't be a spammer.